here are these equations again, the ratio of concentration of ligand bound to its primary receptor over the sum of all of the secondary receptors is specificity factor alpha. And for easier measurement, we can write it in terms of K sub Ds and concentrations of the receptors um, that are unbound. Okay. Like I said, it depends, however, on ligand concentration. So if you have a ligand concentration that falls between the K sub D of your primary receptor and your off-target receptor, then you'll have a high specificity value, something much greater than one. This was also sort of the setup for when we were doing what concentration of drug do we want to deliver to make sure we bind receptor A and not receptor B. So shooting for something in the middle is what is good here. As you have a ligand concentration, you raise it so it starts to get closer and closer um, sort of to uh, being bigger than the KD of your off-target, alpha drops, um, and eventually the ligand concentration gets really high, alpha's approaching one. Okay. I, will, um, I will make this comment here. So this, this scale of 20 is sort of relative. There is no absolute scale for what is sort of a high specificity factor. Um, we're going to see two plots next that go to an alpha of 100, okay? 20 is still very high. It's still very good. I, there's nothing to say that 100 versus 20 is, is bad. Um, so just, just keep in mind that there is no maximum, really, um, in this case. It kind of all depends on what exactly this receptor combo is. So, like I said, specific binding is going to require that um, the target receptor or the primary receptor be bound and off targets are not bound. And it'll be dependent on the concentration of L. So if you were to plot um, alpha versus the log of uh, the concentration of ligand, and you had sort of maybe, um, we'll do two cases. So there's case one, we're going to have sort of a ratio of KD for our primary target divided by K sub D for our off target. And again, in this case, we're saying maybe there's only two things it binds to. It's primary and it's secondary, and there isn't a whole slew of others. If this were equal to um, 10 to the negative 2, then we would have a specificity factor of um, sort of 100 down here at like 8 of 10. And as ligand concentration increases, the specificity curve would look something like this. And like I said, this is sort of approaching one. And then in case two, if we have K sub D for our target, the ratio of K sub D for our target to our off target is only a difference of 10. then we're going to have a curve that looks sort of something like this. And really what ends up happening is in a case like this, you can't ever really bind up all of one thing and not the other. The KDs are too close together. With our universal binding curve, we need this at least two order of magnitude in order to, to actually have binding to only one um, sort of thing instead of the other. And one of the things that um, your book sort of talks about is that evolutionarily mutations in ligand, like size, shape, sequence, um, are going to sort of be favored that sort of drive this curve into looking something like well, this one up here. This is sort of evolutionarily what wants to happen. Um, but 
I don't know, evolution's kind of lazy. It takes a lot of energy to do it, so it's, it's not that often. But mutations that would sort of set up something like this are what are preferred when you're looking for specificity of binding interactions. And then if we, um, we can also put our specificity factor alpha in terms of fractional saturation, right, or fractional occupancy. Right? Remember this was the, um, F was the fraction of bound receptors over sort of total receptors. And so it's zero when none are bound, it's one when they're all bound. Okay. So fraction of R sub I of our off target is going to be equal to the concentration that is bound to the ligand over the total concentration, which is sort of free plus bound And this is also equal to R sub i over R i total. And so we get an alpha that is equal to the fraction of our target receptor times the total concentration of our target receptor divided by the sum over all of our off targets. What fraction is bound to that? Again, this sort of requires that you're able to calculate um, the complex. You're able to measure the concentration of the complex. Um, but if this information is given to you, this is another useful shortcut if you have been given fractional saturation. Then if we draw sort of two plots here, we'll have um, ligand concentration on the bottom. And we have uh, fractional saturation over here going from zero to one. And on this side we have alpha. Um, and again, like I said, scale is relative. It all sort of depends on what combination of receptor ligand you're, you're talking about. Um, but the example that the book gives, so we have an alpha of 10. And so we said our sort of specificity as ligand concentration increases, specificity sort of goes down, looks something like this. And then fractional saturation, on the other hand, our universal binding curve as ligand concentration goes up looks something like this. This is our K sub D, um, R naught is equal to L when fractional saturation is at half. Okay. This is in the 10 to the negative 10th range. This is in the 10 to the negative 4th range. Okay. So ligand concentration is going up. Specificity is then going down. And you could draw a curve for say your off target receptor, it would look maybe something like this. So the K sub D for your off target receptor is higher. Okay. It's still where its curve crosses the half fractional saturation point. And then the other thing you can do is you can sort of see um, that maybe nearly all of this gets saturated. Your primary receptor is sort of nearly all saturated before you start to see the pickup in the curve of your off-target receptor. Okay. 